In the last session, we looked at the psychometric qualities of norm reference tests. Um, today, we're going to look at in, informal reading inventories and how are they different and how should they be the same in terms of their psychometric qualities. I'll be focusing on the qualitative inventory for two reasons. One is because it is the one that we use in our K-12 reading teacher program. The other is, is, be is because it consistently in reviews of major informal reading inventories comes out on top in terms of its psychometric qualities. So let's talk about first how they're different. Informal reading inventories really sh should be called tests, as Joanne Caldwell points out, because they're not inventories. Be that as it may, the name for it, years and years ago when Betts first pr uh, proposed this system in 1920s was informal inventories, and the name has stuck. The informal reading inventories does have standardized directions, which is one of the reasons why it, it is not as informal as the title uh, supposes, just like norm reference tests, which also have standardized directions. Um, in contrast to norm reference tests, however, IRIs are usually not timed. We do a part where we time them for reading uh, rate, but other than that, there's no timing, whereas norm reference tests are always timed in order to find out how much students can do within a specified amount of time compared to others who have the same amount of time. In informal reading inventories, the reading passages are leveled by difficulty, and these passages are designated as primer, first, second, etc. In norm reference tests within any one test, there's a wide range of difficulty to see what the top of uh, the reading achievement is for each group. In informal reading inventories, the scores determine the individual student uh, profile are the instructional reading level, their listening level, and comprehension level. For norm reference test, scores rank the students from the lowest to the highest. They do not give information of what a student knows or at what level he can read, which is in contrast to the informal reading inventories. So what should be the same about both kinds of tests? Informal reading inventories should have studies of reliability, especially test retest or alternate forms. and if adequate reliability is established, then it's appropriate to look at validity, especially construct and content, content validity. So let's look at the uh, reliability levels that are recommended for informal reading inventory intended use. You will notice that they are very much the same as for a uh, norm reference test. For high stakes decisions like retention, or placement in a special program, 0.90 or greater. To determine the need for additional testing, for example, a referral for special education, 0.80. And for routine classroom instruction, the reviewers say that 0.70 is adequate. To identify reading levels, to identify reading difficulties, to match readers to appropriate texts, and to group students for instruction. Since you as reading teachers will be working primarily in the latter, identifying uh, reading levels, etc., you should keep in mind that you want to see at least a 0 0.70 reliability in any informal reading inventory that you're going to use. Now let's take a look at the QRI. Interscore reliability is a very important part of establishing the reliability with which two different people will obtain the same score. Um, in checking for pro, uh, scoring on prior knowledge, the re agreement was 98%. That's outstanding. Identifying oral reading miscues between two different uh, scorers was 99%. And scoring comprehension questions was 98%. So you can be confident that the QRI ha would have excellent inter rater reliability and that once you are trained to use it, you will score with reliability. 
Now let's take a look at how students perform on alternate form reliability. First of all, the consistency in scoring the comprehension scores on two passages of the same reliability, readability, was greater than or equal to 0 0.80. It also was noted that instructional level designation for two passages of the same genre ranged from 75% to 100% agreement across primer to upper middle school level. All of those meet the criterion for use of the QRI for sure with, with classroom level uh, decision making and even at higher levels. It is interesting to note that the QRI authors say that it, between the uh, narrative and expository scores at the same level, this uh, level of agreement may not be reached, which has also been my experience, that generally students may uh, attain a, a instructional level one grade level lower on expository compared to norm narrative. Not always, but often. So now, since the reliability of the QRI has been established as adequate, let's look at the validity Remember that when you look at validity coefficients, you want to see 0.60 or greater. First of all, we'll look at the content validity, which is based on reading research. Uh, the authors make a strong argument for c including both narrative and expository text, because those are the kinds of reading materials that students uh, will encounter. They also link assessment of prior knowledge to comprehension from the research. The, and what is especially uh, commendable about the QRI is the level of comprehension questions. Um, <clears throat> While text-based questions comprise 82% of all of the questions asked, high-level inferential are 18%. And the other IRIs that were reviewed in this particular meta-analysis ranged only from 2% to 12%. Therefore, the QRI uh, ranges from both text-based, look it up there in the text, to having to do inferential reasoning. <clears throat> For criterion-related validity, the QRI uh, was correlated with the word, um, reading mastery word recognition test and uh, validity coefficient of 0 0.90 indicates a high level of correlation with a well-established norm reference test. The QRI passage comprehension was correlated with the uh, reading mastery passage comprehension subtest with a re uh, validity coefficient of 0.75. So overall, the QRI 5 has demonstrated very strong psychometric qualities for both reliability and validity. So when do you use a norm reference test? criterion reference test or an informal inven reading inventory. You would use norm reference tests when you want to compare students to a norm group. How is this student doing in relation to others of his age or grade? Criterion reference tests compare the student performance to a criterion or level of mastery proficiency. The Minnesota MCAs or the Wisconsin reading tests are a, a good example of that. Informal reading inventories, on the other hand, establish instructional levels for reading, comprehension, and listening, and therefore they are most useful for planning instruction for a student or groups of students. The bottom line assessment decisions about which IRI, whether to use an IRI are, is this test appropriate for your students? You do need to look at the content of the passages. For example, years ago I was using an informal reading inventory uh, with Latino kids from the south side of Chicago 
and the passage, which most of them could read pretty well, had to do with tracking cougars in a national forest and uh, setting a a wildfire. Only one out of 25 students knew what a cougar was, and that's because he had an uncle who was a rancher in the foothills of Mexico and had to worry about cougars. One other thought it was a car. Well, obviously, their comprehension was nowhere near what it should be because they did not have prior knowledge. So you need to look at the uh, topic and a student's prior knowledge. One great thing about the QRI is it gives you about five passages at the same readability. So if it's obvious from the prior knowledge questions that this student has no background knowledge in the topic, you can pick a different one for him to read. The next question to look at is, is the test reliable enough for Tier 1 classroom instructional decisions of 0.70? Certainly the QRI in every aspect meets that and exceeds it. Is the test reliable enough for Tier 2 grouping decisions, that is, uh, help that's given outside of the classroom? You'd want to see a 0.80. Again, it meets that. Is it reliable enough for Tier 3 high-stakes decisions, for example, placement in special education, 0.90? Certainly some aspects of the QRI meet that also, although you would never use just one test for placement in special education. It can be a very valuable adjunct to the IEP process. Bottom line, will this test give you useful information for teaching your students based on 40 years of work with informal reading inventories as well as uh, norm-referenced tests and criterion-referenced tests, I would give you a definite emphatic yes to use of the informal reading inventories, particularly the QRI.